Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revisiting Archive, a channel where we explore the fascinating history of the world. This is the 13th installment in our Portuguese history series, and in this video, we will talk about the presidency of Mario Soares, marked by efforts of democratization, modernization, and achieving global engagement. How did Mario Soares, a former political prisoner and exile, become the first elected civilian president of Portugal in 60 years? How did he lead the country through the challenges and opportunities of the post-revolution and post-colonial period? And how did he represent Portugal in the international arena and the European project? Let's find out. Mario Soares was born in Lisbon in 1924, the son of a liberal republican and anti-fascist activist. He studied law and philosophy at the University of Lisbon and Sorbonne in Paris, and became a student activist and thereafter taking up a law practice defending political dissidents. In 1964, he and others founded a clandestine society, the Portuguese Socialist Action, which later became the Portuguese Socialist Party, of which he was the first Secretary General. He was arrested 12 times and exiled twice by the regime and became one of the most prominent and respected leaders of the resistance. Mario Soares returned to Portugal in 1974, after the Carnation Revolution a peaceful coup that ended the Estado Novo regime, a corporatist authoritarian regime that had ruled Portugal since 1933. He became the foreign minister in the provisional government and oversaw the negotiations for the independence of the African and Asian colonies. He also became the first constitutionally elected prime minister since the revolution and led the country through the difficult transition to democracy. He was a prime minister from 1976 to 1978 and again from 1983 to 1985. He was also the main advocate for Portugal's integration into the European Economic Community or the EEC, the predecessor of the European Union or the EU, which Portugal joined in 1986. Mario Soares became the first elected civilian president of Portugal in 1986, ending 60 years of army overlordship. He was re-elected in 1991 and served until 1996. As president, he played a crucial role in consolidating democracy, modernizing the economy and enhancing the cooperation with the EU and other countries. He also faced several challenges and crises, such as the constitutional conflicts with the Prime Minister Anibal Cavaco Silva, the social unrest and the strikes caused by the austerity measures, the corruption scandals and the political instability and the international tensions and the wars in Angola, Mozambique, and the former Yugoslavia. Mario Suarez was a charismatic and influential leader, who had a vision and a passion for Portugal and its people. He was also a controversial and divisive figure, who had his critics and opponents both inside and outside his party. He was also a global and a European citizen, who had a network and a reputation in the international community. He was also a man of culture and a man of action who wrote several books and articles and founded several institutions and initiatives, such as the Mario Suarez Foundation, a cultural and civic organization. Mario Suarez died in 2017, at the age of 92, leaving behind a legacy and a memory that are still alive and relevant today. He is widely regarded as the father of Portuguese democracy and one of the greatest statesmen of the 20th century. He is also remembered as a friend and a mentor by many people who admired and respected him. He is also honored and celebrated by many awards and distinctions, such as the Grand Cross of the Order of Liberty, the Charlemagne Prize, and the UNESCO Félix Ho Poets Boigné Peace Prize. What do you think of Mario Suarez and his presidency? Do you agree or disagree with his decisions and actions? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Revisiting Archive. Thank you for watching, and as always guys, Keep revisiting the archive.